So in this tutorial, we're going to look at adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. Uh, but don't worry about them being algebraic fractions, because actually the rules are exactly the same as for fractions with numbers in them, numeric fractions. And if you have watched the tutorial on uh, adding and subtracting numeric fractions, you'll see that these key points here are exactly the same. So let's just do it and not be worried by the numbers. First thing we need to do is find the lowest common bottom or the lowest common denominator as it's usually known and that is usually just the two things multiplied together. We'll see later on that sometimes we need to be careful but if it's simple then it's the two things multiplied together. So that means that a over b minus c over d can be written as something over bd minus something else over bd. And how do we find the tops? Well, we just multiply by the same as we've multiplied uh, the bottoms. So what have we multiplied the b by to get bd? Obviously d. And so we multiply the top by d as well. And then what have we multiplied in the second fraction, the d by, to get bd? Well, we've multiplied by b this time. And so we multiply the top, which was c, times b as well. And so now I can say that a over b minus c over d is, well, it all goes over bd, and I've got ad minus cb. Now, I quite like to write things in alphabetical order, so I'm going to call that bc. And in fact, uh, step 5 doesn't need to happen here because the top is already as simple as it can be. Now, the reason I've squished another uh, question onto the same page is because although this one looks much more complicated it is in fact exactly the same working as the first one okay so we're just replacing a by 1 b by x minus 1 c by 3 and d by x minus 2 so if you get stuck in the working that's what's happening right so my lowest common denominator is just the two denominators multiplied together so x minus 1 times x minus 2. And so I can say, right, 1 over x minus 1 minus 3 over x minus 2 is equal to something over x minus 1, x minus 2, minus something else over x minus 1, x minus 2. Now, what is what are those two somethings? Well, what have I multiplied x minus 1 by? to get that denominator, x minus 1, x minus 2, well, I've clearly multiplied it by x minus 2, haven't I? And so I multiply the top by x minus 2 as well, so 1 times x minus 2. And then I look at the second one, what have I multiplied the bottom by? Well, I've multiplied the bottom of my right-hand fraction by x minus 1 to get to the right-hand fraction on the other side. So I multiply the top by x minus 1 as well. Okay, now uh, step 4, write as a single fraction, okay, and the taking care when subtracting, well I just need to make sure I'm using brackets appropriately, so it's all over x minus 1, x minus 2, and what have I got? Well one lot of x minus 2 is just x minus 2, and I've got 3 times x minus 1. And now I just need to simplify the top, which might take me a couple of lines, but it'll be fine. Okay, the first bracket I just can leave out, but the second one I need to multiply the th minus 3 by the x and the minus 3 by the minus 1. So let's do all of that. And this is equal to, I've still got the same bottom, x minus 1, x minus 2, which I'm not going to multiply out because that wouldn't make it any simpler. And I get x minus 2, Minus 3 times x is minus 3x. Minus 3 times minus 1 is plus 3. And that's really where we need to be careful. And so I get uh, x minus 3x is minus 2x. And minus 3, sorry, minus 2 plus 3 is 1. So I'm going to write it as 1 minus 2x so that I don't have a minus sign at the front. Over x minus 1, x minus 2. And that, to my eyes, is a simple as we can write that. Now we are going to do a slightly more complicated pair of questions. Um, it's only complicated by the fact that the denominators 
have something in common. Okay, and life is so much easier if we get the right lowest common denominator to start with. So, the lowest common denominator here is not AB times BC, but is just ABC. Okay, why is that? Well, you can see that AB goes into ABC quite happily, and you can also see that BC goes into ABC quite happily. So, it actually makes life a lot simpler if we choose the proper lowest common denominator. Thereafter, it's quite straightforward. Okay, we get um, P over AB plus Q over BC is equal to, well, we've got to put it as two fractions with the new bottom, so ABC uh, plus something over ABC. And again, I just need to find out what we've multiplied by. How do I get from AB to ABC? I multiply by C. So I multiply the top by C as well. That's P times C. And then what about the second fraction? Well, I multiply BC by A to get ABC. And so I've got Q times A. And if I now write it all over ABC, and again, because I like things to be in alphabetical order, I'm going to write P times C as CP, and A to, uh, Q times A as AQ, and no more simplification is needed. Now, that may have been quite obvious how we did the bottoms there, but when you see something like this with those bottoms there, it's sometimes not so obvious, but it's even more crucial we get the correct lowest common denominator here. Okay, now noticing that I've essentially got the same pattern, A, B, and B, C, I only need one lot of X minus 1 in my lowest common denominator. So the lowest common denominator will be X times X minus 1 times X plus 2. I don't need X minus 1 squared. In fact, if I do, the whole thing becomes more complicated. So let's just make that point, N, B, there's only one x minus 1. Okay, I don't need two of them. Right, moving on, we can now just do the question in the same way as we've done the previous three. I've got uh, 4 over x, x minus 1, plus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 2. Okay, and that is equal to, right, now I do need a bit of space here. I've got x, x minus 1, x plus 2 on the bottom of each of them, x, x minus 1, x plus 2. And I have to ask myself the question, what have I multiplied the bottom of the first fraction by on the left-hand side to get the bottom of the first fraction on the right-hand side? Well, I've multiplied it by x plus 2, and so I multiply the top by x plus 2 as well. And then I do the same for the second fraction, I've clearly multiplied the bottom of the second fraction uh, by x, haven't I, to get the bottom of the second fraction on the right-hand side. Okay, I've dropped a plus sign in the middle there, but there it is. And so I've just got 1 times x on there. And then I can write this all over the same bottom, which is x, x minus 1, x plus 2 still. Okay, as I say, this really is the same question as question 3, uh, just with different a, b, and c, and different p and q, obviously. And that is, therefore, uh, 4 times x plus 2 plus x. And I've got a little bit of simplification to do. Multiply at the first bracket by doing 4 times x and 4 times uh, plus 2. And because I'm feeling brave, I'm going to simplify this all in one go. And I'm going to say I've got 4x uh, plus the other x is 5x. And 4 times 2 is plus 8. And that's still all over the same bottom. If you hadn't chosen the simplest, lowest common denominator, you would then have uh, a bit more of a mess and some cancelling to do as well. So it really does pay to find the lowest common denominator before you start. <laughs>